we're about to witness something historic, I think, tonight. I think it's definitely probably the wave of the future where it is cool, though, that this is the first one. Talk about culture and entertainment. Whoa, you try and catch us. Anybody out there? wonder if there's more like this to follow, and then I'm going to be like, you know, I remember the first time they, they did a shape on the, uh, on, uh, you know, a shape venue that was both cool in, inside and outside. That's first celebrity reaction at the grand opening of The Sphere. And Vegas Revealed was there. We take you inside the state-of-the-art venue as U2 rocks The Sphere on opening weekend. Plus, from parking to concessions, what you need to know before going. Special coverage of the grand opening of The Sphere starts now on Vegas Revealed. Welcome everyone to episode 189 of Vegas Revealed, a special episode today. I'm Dana Roselli with Sean McAllister. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is kind of an episode five years in the making, at least, <laughs> it, kind of, right? It really is. You know, we were there for opening weekend of The Sphere and we said, we've got to do a podcast just all about The Sphere because we have so much great content, so much great information. And so we decided to drop this podcast early this week. Well, and there's so many questions that people have about the experience at the sphere, getting to the sphere. So we're going to be covering all of that. We also have interviews with uh, the CEO, the chairman of Madison Square Garden Company, James Dolan, along with Hollywood film director, Darren Aronofsky, who uh, really is the visionary behind Postcard from Earth, which is debuting at the Sphere. So uh, we have some great stuff along with celebrity interviews as well. Yeah, lots of celebrities came out. Some just went right to the show. Others stopped on the red carpet, so we were able to chat with them. So we've got some great interviews coming up. Um, this was before they actually went into the Sphere, so you could see the excitement was building as everyone wanted to just get in and see what this place looked like already. Yeah, I mean, it... Obviously, we've seen how stunning the sphere is from the outside, but now that we've uh, seen what the inside is like, it really is just even that much more breathtaking mm. than it already was. And Dana, I want to start with asking what your experience was like. You went and saw you two opening weekend. Let's start with... What was it like? I know there's so much to talk about. I'm already stressed about it because I'm like, <laughs> what do we want to talk about first? You know what? Uh, first of all, stunning. I must say um, it was breathtaking. There were times when uh, the U2 show started where literally I felt like uh, I, my breath was taken away. I was like, and I didn't even expect to to feel that way. Yeah. Okay. And and U2, just so you know, I don't follow U2. I know U2 music. I like U2 music, but um, normally would I have bought a ticket to go see U2? Probably not. It's not my thing. I loved them. They were amazing. I am now a U2 fan. Okay. Bono was as rock star as rock star could be. Wow. Um, I really enjoyed it, and and now I get it, okay? But the sphere, it's hard because it's like U2 and then the sphere. It's like they're both headlining. Dual headliners. For this show. <laughs> it, it was amazing, and I'm going to go all through that of what it was like in there. But I wanted to talk about some of the transportation, traffic, because we get so many questions about that, right? You and I Ubered there on the first night where we did the red carpet, but we didn't have to be there um, like right before the show. We were there a lot earlier at 5.30. Right. No issues at all on drop off, right? There are plenty of side roads there where you can get dropped off. Um, when we left, we left like a little bit after you two would have started. What did we leave? Like 8.30? Like 8.30, 8.35-ish. Yeah. yeah. And we kind of went a back way to pick up the Uber and realized, no, we had to go toward the front. Um, I, I know that there's a ride share specified pickup lot, and there were signs inside directing you to where you need to go for your pickup. I did not leave that way Saturday night, so I can't speak to that either. Okay. So I haven't heard much on that. On the way there on Saturday, we decided to park in the Palazzo parking garage, and it was event parking only. So it is 30 bucks no matter what, okay? So everyone that enters that parking garage is going to have to pay $30 on event night. So just a flat fee on the flat way fee. in. Flat fee on the way in. You're right. So you you know use a charge card um, and just pay right at the window. There's attendants there. Um, and what works with that is that on the exit, all the parking... Um, like the parking gates, gates the arms <laughs> are up. 
Oh, so that you don't have to wait for every car to, in the arm to go up. Right. So that was really good because upon exit, you know, everyone had already paid. So they weren't like putting their thing in, trying to right. see if they paid. So it flowed out um, nicely. More places <laughs> should do that. I know. They really should for everything, right? Um, and the Palazzo parking garage was not that busy. We asked the parking attendant why. And she said, you know what? A lot of people are here for the Sphere experience. They've planned ahead and they're taking like shuttles or Ubers from their hotel. So that was nice to know. There were more spots in the Palazzo parking garage that night than I've ever seen <laughs> on a Saturday night. Interesting, right? It is. <laughs> then once you go in, uh, say if you're coming you know, from the Palazzo, and of course you could park at the Venetian parking garage too, you basically go where um, their, the theater is. And then you kind of, I'm not going to give directions, you go past through the ballrooms, you make your way through the Sands Expo, and there is a bridge over to the Sphere. It's all enclosed. It is a little bit of a walk, but it's no big deal at all. And then the lines start for ticket entry. There's a couple different lines. Suites are over to the left, VIP, general admission. You get through. Security was great. I got flagged. Oh, you did? Yeah, I had to go into another little section for a minute. He had to wand me. I don't know if it was jewelry or what, and check my bag. Um, I had a little wallet with me, a little wristlet, actually, and everything was good to go. So something alarmed the the security. So the security <laughs> was good. And then you walked into the lobby. And then when we left, I'll admit, we left halfway through the last song. Okay. No problem getting out at all. Um, we just walked right back to the Palazzo. And like I said, the arms were up in the parking garage, and we left. Nice. So easy in, easy out. So far. So far, mm -hmm. which is the best that you can expect, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but what was it like when you stepped into the theater area of the sphere? What was that experience? Like visually, audio? I mean, what was that? I was trying to think of like to, what to do. Well, first of all, when you walk in, it almost feels... But like times 100, like that feeling, well, like as in like a little bit, oh gosh, it's so hard to describe, like a Universal Studios Disney feeling where the music playing is, is, is current and mysterious. And it was that music that was playing when we were standing out in the red carpet, that U2 song. Oh, that right. They, yes. It, just, uh, it was yep. mostly instrumental. Yeah. And you're like, walk in and it's got this purplish and pinkish hue and there's beautiful, you know, kind of art hanging from the ceiling. The ceilings are high. There's an escalator up, you know, and it, it you just walk into this lobby and it kind of has a, a, like that Disney Universal Studio feel. Like you're walking into an attraction. Yeah. You know, an experience, not just an arena. Because this is more, and you're going to hear about this from uh, MSG's CEO, this is more than an arena. This yes. is an experience. And that's the way they're thinking about it from uh, the guest point of view and from the point of view of uh, creators who they collaborate with. They say, you know what? We need people who view this as an experience yeah. because this is not just another venue. Right. It's so true. You walk in, we sat in uh, 108, okay? Because I know a lot of people on the like the MSG Sphere Facebook pages are all sharing, where do you sit? Where's not obstructed? Where's the best place? Blah, blah, blah. Our seats were fabulous. We were kind of close to the artist. So there was people on the ground standing. Okay. We were like one section up and then maybe like five rows back. So very good seats. Ooh, nice. Kind of right in the middle. I recommend section 100. Now, as you go back, though, at a certain point, and I should have paid attention to exactly what row it starts at. We were at 108, and I would say roughly, don't quote me on this, probably there would be 10 more rows behind us before the kind of obstructed view starts. And if you search, you'll you'll find yeah. where those rows are and getting tickets. I know that they flag those yeah. seats and let you know that it is an obstructed view. There's an overhang. So that just means there's a certain part of the sphere behind you that you won't see. So something's above your head. Some things do happen uh, high up above, but I wouldn't say for this show there were like so many things that you missed everything. Sure. A, a lot of it did happen you know, in that wide kind of scope, some things that at one point there was a helicopter that flew over our head. A helicopter? And I thought it was real. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? The girl next to me was like, what do you mean? The top of the sphere isn't open? It's not, because there was like a black hole and it's like, 
showing this, like, I don't know, like, I'm going to say it all wrong. Like this, this barrier cement at, at wall with a hole at the top with this beautiful <laughs> kind of atrium ish looking thing. And she's like, it's not open. I'm like, no, it's not open. That's the, the top of the sphere. It's a projection. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I really felt like when I looked around and you'll see from some of our videos, there's not a bad seat in the house unless you have the obstructed view um, and you were looking to look right straight up above you. Right. Yeah. It, there was also like a little bit of a breeze in there. I can't explain. I don't know if they're pumping it in, but it was like, and it wasn't like a cold breeze. It was a comfortable breeze. So again, you felt like it was like you were on a ride, like at Disney or something. Well, and <laughs> you say a breeze. I think in, in some of the video that I've seen, it actually looks like when the people's cameras pan around and you see the the screen of the sphere and you see the audience as well it looks like it's bleachers and theater see it seating in an outdoor space right did it feel like you oh were outdoors it sometimes? just yes i mean the light i don't know so much was happening <laughs> the stage i thought was just black and then it started changing colors you know bono got on at one point he started spinning around um there were like several live cameras to show close-ups of them so you're seeing like for some songs bono's there huge on the screen you can see the beads of sweat you know pouring down his chest i mean he came out without the Bono shades and then he put them on, which was really cool. <laughs> so it was a moment. It was a moment. Yeah. And then he changed his shades a couple of times. Not only outfit changes, shade changes. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. I thought it was really cool. He he did uh, not, uh, nod to Elvis a couple of times and talked about, hey, at one point he said, hey, let's get married in Vegas, man. So big nod to the weddings here too. Nice. Um, I loved the Vegas kind of twist there. So much happens. There's just, when you look at some of the scenes where there's this one where the sun kind of comes up and goes over your head, like a full day passes you by slowly. And then the sun sets and then it turns to night and the the stars are out and the planets you can see. It's amazing. It literally feels like you're there, like you're outside, like you said, because it's so crystal clear. Yeah. And what about the audio? Because I know that that was a, a big thing. So, I mean... Is, was it like super crystal clear oh and gosh. different from other performance venues? Yes. And that was the first thing that we said when we sat down and we were just listening to even the DJ. Mm. Um, they have a great DJ that plays and moves in this neon car through the pit on the bottom where everyone's standing, playing songs from the Killers and Elvis and the Beatles. It was great. The vibe before <laughs> the show is so fun, by the way. And Bono actually came out um, about an hour late. They usually would probably start, you know, the show's supposed to start at 8, usually normally 8.15, but show didn't start till 9. He did make an announcement, though. He apologized, which uh, that's why, again, I like I like you too. I liked that Bono recognized th um, that they were late. Right. And he said there were some technical difficulties before the show. Expected, we're inside the sphere, you know. So I was like, great, thanks for the apology, thanks for recognizing it. Um but anyway, so the DJ really had like a long time <laughs> in the pit. <laughs> the guy was like running out of songs probably, but he did a great job. And the crowd was, it, the vibe before is amazing. They're using the sound beam technology that's different than uh, traditional speakers that you would use for just about anything else. Yeah. Uh, it, remarkable. I, I don't even, and like, okay, so so right there, I feel like we could stop with that because even you were saying you can't look at the videos online, even the videos if you're watching our video podcast. It just does not paint what it really, the picture of what it really is like in person. Well, and that's exactly what, that was my train of thought mm -hmm. as I was looking at all of the, the videos that were coming out from opening weekend. Like, there is no way that the videos can do justice to the visuals and to the audio that you actually experience in person. Yeah, so true. You just, you need to experience it. You really do. Even the seats were, I felt like spaced really nice. Mm. Not all bunched together, super close. They have cup holders for your drink, but they come down. So it's not that like, excuse me, excuse me, because right, there's a bunch right, of like right, cup right. holders sticking out. That was wonderful. Um, th so the whole experience was very comfortable. I did not feel stuffed into an arena. I did not feel crowded. I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, there's 17,500 people in here and we're all on top of each other. 
It didn't feel that way either. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it was great. The restrooms were beautiful and easy access right off. As soon as you walk out, there's usually one to the left, one to the right from your section. So that was nice. Um, and then uh, let's just get to concessions. People were asking about that too. I didn't do a whole price point thing or anything like that. Um, write and make notes because I was kind of really into in awe. <laughs> but um, I did get a drink. I got a vodka soda and it was $16. I got a single. Okay. Not a double. The double was double. Um, and then, you know, there were cocktails like margaritas, beer, things like that. Um, when I glanced at the menu, though, I noticed it was pretty much on par with Vegas prices at arenas at uh, Legion Stadium, at theaters. So nothing struck me as this is off the wall. Right. Well. Which is, you know, good. It was comparable. It wasn't right. skyrocketed even more because it's already expensive. <laughs> um, and then the cups are reusable. It says, please return me. It's kind of like a frosted plastic. Um, and I love this. It said, please return me when you leave. I'm reusable. And they have all these uh. like bins, like yellow bins, and you throw your cup in there when you leave and they recycle it. I thought that was great. It's so green of them. It is. I it was so that. green and it made it feel even fresher inside. I felt like, <laughs> wow, I really care about the environment here. Um, so that, I think that's it for, for my experience inside. And because I do feel like you just need to go, um, any negatives at all? I'm not sure that I, I have any on this experience. I think it was just, I was in awe. And I thought it was fabulous. It was my first experience seeing U2. I, I didn't realize how many U2 songs I knew. Um, I, I wish they would have maybe like, and me, and I went with Perez Hilton, who's a, a, a popular celebrity blogger, has been to yeah. thousands of concerts. And we were both saying, you know, we wish for the sphere moment that maybe they would have done greatest hits instead of focus on one album. Oh, right. Which is totally cool when you tour and stuff. But we felt like, you know, that would have just, if, if it would have been every single song was just like their biggest, biggest hits, that could have been a little bit more, uh, well, for me, as not being a U2 follower, for me, a general person, I would have loved to just hear all the greatest hits. But it, I wasn't bothered in any way. He also did bring two audience members up on stage at different moments, and they have this really cool little platform that lifts them up. <laughs> and they get on, and then when they exit, it goes down. So um, the YouTube people mover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> YouTube people mover. So um, yeah, no, no negatives for me. I just I enjoyed the whole experience. I loved it. Now, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And it sounds like I mean, judging from reaction uh, online, it seems like a lot of people have had yeah a very similar positive experience and are just in awe of yeah. everything. And and when I was sitting there, Sean, I was thinking of you too. It's like, you know, I was sitting there going, it's so amazing to me that I moved here in 2004. Uh, I know you moved here just shortly after that. And that how many things I've been able to be a part of and watch being built and then sit inside when it's open. It's almost unreal. No, there's no other city, I don't think, that has had as many things go up Oh my gosh. As we have in the last I don't think so. 20 years. It, it just can't be. So we've watched things go down. We've watched things go up. And I'm sitting in the sphere going, it's so crazy because at the blink of an eye, I feel like, even though I know it's been a long time, how is this even possible? <laughs> we were present. I were looking at going, how is this even, how did this even happen? I don't know. So kudos to the whole Sphere team and Madison Square Garden and the construction workers. Holy cow. That, oh, my gosh. The folks that installed the LED lights. You can go to our social media and look at some of those pictures. Incredible. It really is a, a feat of engineering and a feat of imagination, really. I mean, going into a, it's a, a whole new medium for filmmakers, for musicians. Uh, I mean, it is the next generation of live entertainment. And the people we were able to interview on the red carpet, I know that you love the tech stuff so much. So I know you were really <laughs> excited, though, when we were able to interview James Dolan. Yeah, James Dolan, the CEO of uh, MSG Entertainment. Um, he had even said that even though it had been five years since the groundbreaking until the grand yeah. opening of Sphere, this is something that he had dreamed about since he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just the culmination of all of the thoughts and ideas that he's had going around in his head. And we talked to him about why he sees the grand opening as the dawn of a new entertainment era. 
You've dreamed this up for how long? I mean, I can only imagine it's got to be incredible to look up and then walk in and see what you've done. The, the, it was six years ago that the concept gelled, right? but I've been thinking about this since I was a teenager. Not about this place, but about the, the technology and about the notion of, of being in a place and being in somewhere else at the same time. The, 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 the object of the sphere is to convince you that you're not here that you're someplace else, like I said, like the Amazon rainforest or the Arctic or under the ocean or in space, etc. To be able to take people to places like that and have them really feel what it's like. The, um, I've been thinking about that for a long time. Actually, there was a science fiction writer, Ray Bradbury, who wrote a story called The Belt, um, all about two kids who go into a room and put themselves on the African belt. Um, and I read that as, as a kid and I always loved that story. So that is definitely part of the inspiration. I'm curious, why did you choose Vegas as the first spot for this? I love Vegas. I've been coming here my whole life. Um, but Vegas is the city of light, right? Vegas is where all the biggest, you know, where all the neon. I came here, I came here 30 years ago and, and, and was you know, just taken by the, the, the bright lights of the city and, and both the community and the government have been so welcoming, right, and they wanted this, that they, they're encouraging to us, and to do a project like this, you need, you need partnership like that, and it was clear Las Vegas had that. I mean, we've seen a lot of openings, but we, we never think the other one can top the other, but this is topping everything. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And I feel like with the technology that you're debuting here at the Sphere, it, it's almost on par with like the early dawn of movies in Hollywood, where people were having to figure out how to how to make it happen. You do feel that way? Yes, I do. I, this is this is a new medium. The, 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 uh, there, are, there are aspects of this that, that have never been, you know, creators have never had a palette like this before, where, where it's not just a rectangular box that they're programming, but it's an entire experience. And they have to think experientially in order to be creative with it. So I, I think we're going to see a lot, of, a lot of great content coming out of here. And lastly, I heard you say uh, just before you, you popped here that you are looking forward to seeing this with a crowd for the first time, what that's going to feel like for you to see faces. And yes, well, that's the payoff, isn't it? I mean, this is who we made it for, everybody who's coming tonight. Um, and I can't wait to see their reaction. And I think James is hoping that there are going to be spheres in cities around the world. So Las Vegas ultimately ultimately in the big picture won't be the only one however we were watching a new interview uh that a news station out of New York City did with James Dolan and they asked him they said <laughs> so do you see New York City as one of these future venues for a sphere and he was like well i don't know if New York City wants it then we can have the conversation but he he basically said that Las Vegas just open arms welcomed the idea of the sphere and the construction, like everything that goes with it. Yeah. Las Vegas just rolled out the carpet and said, let's do it. I love to hear that, right? So do I. It's because we're up for everything. I mean... It's great. I'm so happy to live in a city that has the sphere for the first time. It's so cool. And, you know, I must say I got a little emotional when he was talking about, I mean, we we talked to him before he was going to go in and watch yeah. you two perform with an audience for the first time. His vision. I mean, and I could just tell, like, I was, this is such a big moment for him, Huge. you know? And he was like, I can't wait to see whatever, how everyone's going to react. And uh, <laughs> so it was a pleasure to interview him. I was so happy we got the chance to do that. And it was so nice of him to stop and chat with us because, you know, he was stopping at different stations and I know he wanted to get inside. So yeah, that was a great, that was a great get. We enjoyed talking to him. It was. And among the faces that he saw uh, taking in the the sights and sounds <laughs> of the Sphere Las Vegas for the first time were a ton 
of celebrities. Talking uh, Oprah Winfrey and Gail King, Connie Britton, Elizabeth Banks, Jane Seymour, Dakota Fanning, Diplo, Brian <laughs> Cranston, Aaron Paul, Oscar De La Hoya, John Hamm, I'm uh, Steffi yeah. Graf and Andre Agassi. And I saw um, the Sphere shared Kate Hudson was there too. Yes. Yeah, she was like tons doing of stars. stuff on her Instagram story in such a variety, right? Of celebrities, totally. you know, like a total variety, like, you know, actors and sitcoms and movie stars and athletes and DJs. I mean, it was really cool. Business people, entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I loved that. Um, I saw Connie Britton. She she was in a rush to get inside and man, I was fanning out. I love Connie <laughs> Britton from Friday Night Lights and every other show she's been in. She looked great too, by the way. She did look great, right? And Dakota Fanning, she came right at the end and I think the show had st- was about to start. So she kind of took some photos and walked in and we didn't get a chance to chat with her but we did get a chance to chat with a lot of celebrities and it was so much fun talking to them about what they were expecting to see why they actually came to Vegas for this opening and even you know some of the people that they were think when we asked them you know like who do you think should headline next after you two who would you like to see in here we got some answers from that too We did. So uh, you're going to hear right now from Josh Jumel, Luke Wilson, Skylar Astin, who you may know as an actor from the movie Pitch Perfect, and then uh, actor Adam Scott. You were in a show that was kind of the fantasy world of Vegas for so long. Did you ever imagine that way down the road you'd see something like this? I mean, kind of. This town just does not cease to amaze me. They just keep doing things that feel like they're humanly impossible and, and and i remember when the pyramid remember the 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 the, the Lux, luxor one luxor up? yeah that was a huge deal and they just, they just keep doing it and this i think tops them all in a lot of ways so um you know the human innovation and ingenuity that this town has always amazes me every time i come do you live in holly you live in la i live in la okay so and what i live out in the woods in minnesota too okay. in north dakota a lot too so i always wonder like do la people get jealous that vegas got this and and it's not in los angeles because you guys are movie bus <laughs> you know i think it's cool i mean why you listen it's not that if it's only an hour away i don't mind that it's an easy trip to get here uh it's probably better that it's an hour away otherwise i'd spend too much time and money here so uh yeah i, I have no problem with it and I, and I also love that they have sports here now too. I mean, that's they're gonna have a basketball team soon. They got a great hockey team. Just won the whole damn thing. Yeah, it's a big week for yeah. us, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great. Yeah. You looking forward to seeing you too? Oh my gosh, yes. This is one of my all-time favorite bands. Uh, we're about to witness something historic, I think. Today. I'm, I'm wondering if it's gonna be different than when I saw you two at the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth, Texas, in '87. I, I feel like it's gonna be a little different. <laughs> Maybe slightly more immersive, although it's pretty immersive. Um, no, it, it should be incredible. I mean, what little research I've done about it, it just sounds like James Dolan and the people from Madison Square Garden have built, you know, a one of a kind, state of the art music venue. And uh, just, yeah, what they can do now with technology and sound, and it's, it's unbelievable. I think it's definitely probably the wave of the future where it is cool though that this is the first one. You visit Vegas a lot or? I'll, I'll come a couple times a year. I always like to try and come for a couple concerts and try and play a little golf. Yeah. It's, an un, it's an unbelievable town. I mean it is one of those places where I have to try and slow my heart rate down. You get too excited like a kid. <laughs> it's gonna be like Chris, Christmas morning when you're just exhausted before you've opened a present. <laughs> You're obviously a music fan, a fan of music. So um, what's it like to come here and and be able to have the chance to watch something like this, both visually and then also hearing it? I mean, it's two of your worlds kind of combining. Yeah, I feel very lucky. I really like immersive live performance. Like I saw uh, O, a Cirque show last night, and just the way that they were incorporating music and dance and circus and swimming. Like, I just love, you know, when mediums can kind of blend like that. So this is no different to get the kind of immersive screens with, like, one of the best rock bands of all time. I just feel really lucky to be here. And we're in such a digital world seeing something like this and you being, you know, a younger generation yeah. than some of the people that we've talked to already. I mean, it's got to blow your mind to yeah. see something like this in person. I agree. I mean, I wonder if there's more like this to follow and then I'm going to be like, you know, I remember the first time they, they did a shape on the, uh, on uh, you know, a shape <laughs> venue that was both cool in, inside and outside. I don't know. Or else, or maybe this one will just be like the, the, the really special, you know, venue that there's only one of. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But it's exciting 
exciting to to be a part of the, you know the opening of it, and I'm sure my wheels will be turning as far as like what would what would be even a cool way to utilize this space, like some do some amazing theater, do some amazing like combat sports, even you know different kinds of bands and and artists. It's yeah. it's exciting. If you if you could pick like the next sphere headliner, who would you like to see inside? I just feel like Bruno Mars is like perfect for this kind of a situation. I feel like he's 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 fun. I think he would have a cool visual component, and he's a real showman who can sing and dance, and so that'll be really fun. And he's such a Vegas guy. I saw his residency a couple of years ago, and it was everything you would ever hope for in a Bruno Mars show. Yeah. I mean, this is a different kind of opening, right? I mean, yeah. we're not here in Hollywood. You're here in Vegas for the yeah. opening of kind of a Hollywood-esque type of deal here. Yeah, I, I, I'm just excited. I mean, I've been seeing pictures of the Sphere on, uh, or Sphere on social media. And it's in person. It's even more unbelievable. You can't believe that there's something this big that's one giant screen. It's technology I feel like people haven't really seen yet. Uh, live and uh and u2 seems like the perfect band for that constantly reinventing the live experience so i feel like uh this is going to be a step forward tonight all right if you had to pick the next headliner who would you pick any ideas oh, that's who you'd a great... who you'd, who'd you love to see who else would you love to see in here i don't know i mean maybe uh bruce springsteen or uh yeah that, i think that would be a good bruce good springsteen one, right? good yeah. one yeah, yeah thanks i mean the boss not a bad suggestion at all. No. And, and I know Bruce Springsteen has a long history with uh, Madison Square Garden Entertainment. True, so. true. And then the previous one, Bruno Mars, that was a good idea too. It just makes sense as well. I mean, there's so many people. It's rumored that Harry Styles could be next, not confirmed. It'll be interesting to see, um, but I don't know. Hey, speaking of the boss though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to the boss of Las Vegas, Mayor Carolyn Goodman. She was there on the red carpet. And yes, the sphere is not located in the city limits of Las Vegas, but Las Vegas is Las Vegas. And when something this big opens, the mayor is always making an appearance and excited. No matter what, it's bringing visitors to our town yeah, from she, all over. And always one of the biggest cheerleaders for the greater Las Vegas mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And uh, as we spoke with Carolyn Goodman, she really talked about how uh, Las Vegas is the perfect place for the sphere because our city just embraces innovation so much. There have been a lot of spectacular things oh, that have God. risen up out of the ground here in Las Vegas. How does this compare? This is the most phenomenal, innovative, new venue for promoting um, concepts, innovation, uh, energy, and all the things that Las Vegas truly represents. We're about, we're about change. We're about grasping new ideas, seeking ways for all of the people that choose to come here or live here equally to have a chance to enjoy it. So there are only 17,500 seats. We got a little work to do, but I want to make sure that all the people that are behind the scenes in hospitals Hospitality and that help take care of this city, no matter what their career is, that they can come here and enjoy it. And that's going to be part of the follow through because this does belong in Las Vegas, and there is no place like Las Vegas. It's the best. We had a great chat with Mayor Goodman. We've actually got some other topics that we talked to her about, somewhat related, that we'll have on future podcasts. Yes. She's always a great interview. <laughs> she is, and you never know what what is going to, what kind of answers you're going to get. But we got some good ones. <laughs> I know. Oh, gosh. She's a lot of fun, really. And which made me think, because we were laughing, I have a funny little thing that happened on my exit from you, too. Oh, you okay. You want to hear it? And I think that it might just be that I find it really funny, so I'm curious if you <laughs> Will too. All right. So as you're leaving the show at the Sphere to see you two, uh, you know, when you're leaving, the workers are wonderful. They're so pleasant and courteous. So they say, um, hope you had a good time. Have a good night. And then what are you going to say? You too. Oh, you too. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt really weird because we kept saying to everyone, you too. And they were like, yeah, you too. Like, we just saw you too. <laughs> <laughs> really drives the message home that you were at the U2 concert, right? <laughs> right. It was so funny. <laughs> like, U2. <too. laughs> yeah, we just saw U2. And it just kind of like was all like funny, awkward. <laughs> 
So I thought it was funny. When you leave U2, you're going to tell a lot of people, U2. U2. <laughs> it's great ever time. I like that. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's funny. Okay, good. It's kind of like a dad <laughs> joke, but I liked it. Hey, uh, more <laughs> of our Sphere coverage is still ahead, including uh, the debut of the cinematic mm. feature that's really going to be the, the staple attraction at Sphere. It's called Postcard from Earth. We're going to talk to Darren Aronofsky, mm. who is the Hollywood director, who is the visionary behind that project. That's still to come. Yeah, and, and really interesting stuff from him. So stay tuned for that. Um, but you know what? We want to take a quick moment to tell you about... Frey Ranch Whiskey. It is a Nevada-born whiskey from ground to glass. We talked a little bit about it uh, last week. Sean and I traveled up for the Harvest Festival on the farm. It was fabulous, and the whiskey is delish. If you like whiskey, the bourbon, it's strong, but it's delicious. Yeah, it is. And Dana, you mentioned ground to glass, and it was really cool to be there for Whiskey Harvest and see how every single ingredient that goes into the whiskey and bourbon is grown right there on the Frey Ranch farm mm -hmm. in Fallon, Nevada. So it really is. Everything is right there. They're not importing ingredients yep. and adding it in. It's all Nevada. And it's award-winning whiskey as well. Yeah. And, you know, next week, we're going to show you a little bit more of the process. We're going to go through all of that. But something that, you know, kind of I related to was that, you know, whiskey doesn't need to be consumed straight up. Sometimes you can make a cocktail out of it. Well, many times you can make a cocktail out of it. And I laugh because of what the co-founder, uh, Colby Frey is going to say at the beginning of this kind of section that we, we talked to him about. But, you know, for me, I was like, okay, I like it if I sip, but I don't know if I could sit there and sip whiskey straight up. <laughs> all night long. <laughs> and so I was like, uh, I wanted to know, like, can you make, you know, what are some good cocktails that you can make with Frey Ranch whiskey? And we got that answer. Yeah, usually if somebody says they don't like whiskey, I say, yeah, nobody's perfect. But, <laughs> but um, cocktails are really good. So, I mean, and that's what, with, with, with whiskey, you should drink it how you like it. If you, if you don't like it neat, that's fine. You know, cocktails are great. How, you know, and, and uh, so my favorite is the Ranch Hand which is kind of our signature cocktail. We call it the ranch hand because it's kind of the ranch hand is the guy on the farm that kind of can do everything and isn't afraid to get like, you know, get in and get, get it, pull up, pull up his sleeves and get to work. You know what I mean? And that's what the ranch hand cocktail is. But it's our take on the gold rush, which is it's lemon juice, honey syrup and whiskey. And then our, our kind of take on it is we put a dash of bitters on it for that aromatics. And it's really good. Um, it's very refreshing, like on a hot day after you work all day. But we also have a lot of bees here on the ranch. And so we take our, our honey that from the bees that are here on the ranch and use that for the honey component of that. And it's really kind of cool because it's it's two components out of the three are right here on the farm, made right here on the farm. See that ground to glass concept even applies to the cocktails <laughs> because they make their own honey on the farm that goes, well, I guess the bees make the honey, yeah. but the bees are on the farm and that goes right into the cocktail. Everything is so fresh there. It's amazing. It really was such an experience, wasn't it? I mean, it's a magical place. It really is. Uh, you can find Frey Ranch Whiskey at bars and liquor stores in Nevada and California. They are expanding really quickly now, though, so be sure to ask you know, your, your favorite bartender yeah. or the manager at the liquor store. Ask for Frey Ranch Whiskey. Uh, to be stocked on their shelves. Yeah, definitely. It, it's a great place, like I said, and if you want to go there and experience it, maybe you want to do a weekend getaway, uh, Saturdays from noon to four, they do free tastings and tours. So keep that in mind and put it on your list because we have had a lot of inquiries from people saying, I find the whole thing fascinating. I love whiskey. I would love to go there. So you can. Yeah, and the good news is that you can order Frey Ranch whiskey directly from their website as well. As a matter of fact, right now they have a special harvest collection yeah. available for harvest season so you can uh, find out more about Frey Ranch and order some for yourself at freyranch.com all right. Well, going back to the Sphere now, we want to go back to the Postcard from Earth show that is going to be showing at the Sphere daily a number of times a day. And um, we hope to see it in 
in person soon, and we plan to do that. By the time this podcast actually drops, maybe we will have actually seen it. It debuts, kind of premieres on Friday, October 6th. But remember leading up to the Sphere opening, and I told you someone in my building actually works at the Sphere, and he had said, if you want to see the full and true capabilities of what the Sphere screen inside can do, postcard from Earth is going to be is going to be what you need to see. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because it is a, a cinematic feature that was created specifically for the sphere right. here in Las Vegas. You can't see it anywhere else in the world. And we spoke with Hollywood director Darren Aronofsky about uh, some of the challenges that he encountered having mm -hmm. to deal with brand new technology. It was something we didn't even know if it was possible to do. Uh, and it's, and it definitely we didn't think it was possible to do within the time frame we had. And it's come together pretty damn well. So tell me what makes it different than anything that's ever been out there. I mean, I know yeah. it's the screen, but like, you know, there have been some that like blow our minds with what's different yeah. and what's never been done. Well, the resolution is hard to understand. Your TV at home is probably a 4K TV, uh, but this is 18K. And uh, so at, coming out of the camera that they built called Big Sky, it's 32 gigs per second of information. A, a movie on your computer is two or three gigs. So it's just 32 gigs per second. Um, and the final file of this movie is half a petabyte, which is 500,000 gigabytes. It's like a, a level of information that we're projecting into people's brains <laughs> that's just gonna make people go, Wow, and that's been interesting. Like people, people are just sort of getting emotional just by the beauty of the images. Um, we also do have a story in it, uh, so it works on a few different levels. Yeah. Well, and talk about that big sky camera system yeah, because yeah. I know that I mean this had to be developed specifically yeah. for this venue. Yeah. What challenges did you have in in working with this system? Well, it was a new camera, so there's, as you know before something gets onto the market, it takes, there's normally a lot of consumer testing. There was no testing. So we were testing on site. We'd be off in the rainforest in Vietnam and trying to figure out how to turn this thing on. It, it takes, you know, a dozen people to turn the camera on. So there were technically unbelievable challenges and also it sees 270 degrees. So it's, um, there's nowhere for the crew to hide. That is unreal. 12 people to turn it on? I think so. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. I got a, a number of people. I think it started off a lot more, and it became less and less. So yeah, I think I could have uh, talked about all that tech stuff for hours. You could have. I know you were really, in, I mean, if we had more time with him, right? And he he also, I just love that everyone, I mean, obviously it's the opening of their baby, but they were just so uh, immersed in the interviews yeah. uh, with everyone. They wanted to take everyone's questions and they want to talk about it. I mean, this is their moment, right? But he found it so interesting when I e even mentioned him. I said, someone in my building said, this is what you have to see to get the fun. He's like, who? He's like, do you know where they worked? And <laughs> what do they do? And he was so interested to know that someone there said that and yeah. that meant a lot to him. So I think every single person's feedback is going to mean a lot to him because he put so much passion into it. Yeah, it really is. So you can check the Sphere's website for uh, showtimes, for Postcard from Earth, along with uh, other events that are happening at the Sphere as well. And quickly, I was going to say, now they're calling it also, uh, it's like the Sphere experience. So it's like you go in and there are... Um you know, you can take in obviously the lobby and talk to the right. the robot, oh, the AI what, robot. What's her name? Aura. Aura. Think, Aura. Yeah. You know, and so there's different things happening also as you make your way into Postcard from Earth. And tickets start uh, for some show times at forty nine bucks. So it's it's not it's not out of this world. No. But we do have a tip of what you can do for free that's somewhat related to the sphere. <laughs> Absolutely. It's called Zoo Station, a U2 UV experience. And this is located uh, in the Palazzo. If you're familiar with the Venetian and Palazzo, you know there's that big atrium with a beautiful waterfall, the big letters that spell out love. Uh, this Zoo Station experience is adjacent to that. So mm -hmm. right there off the atrium. And it kind of takes you through U2's career, really interactive experience um, that kind of rounds out the whole sphere experience. Yeah, and I feel like if you're in town to go see U2, you've got to go to this. 
And if you're in town and are thinking about going to see U2 at the Sphere or just want to get that kind of close to Sphere experience, this right. is a great exhibit. It's free again, so that's wonderful. And it's open 11 to 9 p.m. Tuesday to Sunday. Yeah, limited edition merchandise, VIP lounges, tons to do and see over there. And the best part, it's free. Yeah. I did think about getting a U2 t-shirt on the way out. I'm a fan now. I mean, I never thought... You might have to go back to the merch stand and and get that to to commemorate your inaugural sphere experience. <laughs> you know, there were a lot of groups of guys at this show too, but like young, like tons of generations, but like I call them like bro groups, right? They were like <laughs> and, but but I want to say I loved them. I had a group in front of me. They were so immersed. I mean, they were playing the drums in the air the whole time. <laughs> they they were waving their hands. They were calling their girlfriends on FaceTime. And FaceTiming it. I mean, it was so cute. I loved it. So I just thought it was so sweet. And there were people of all ages at the show's yeah. opening weekend. Uh, yeah. And actually, one of the, the people that he called up on stage when I was there was a, oh, not a little girl, but a younger girl yeah. uh, for this part where he has a rope and a balloon and walks with her and sings to her. It was wonderful. Um, but yeah, there were people of all ages there. So I loved it. I loved all the age groups that were there. I just, the whole experience was wonderful. If you get a chance, you know what? You might want to bite the bullet. Hey, another quick tip. When we left in that Uber, remember our Uber driver said, I just dropped off a couple because they waited for like 801 and then oh, they bought right. some last minute tickets that popped up. Maybe someone couldn't go or whatever on StubHub and got a pair of tickets for a reasonable price. Yeah. So they were late getting into the show, but they got really cheap tickets. Yeah. So you never know. Just keep that in mind. Hang out. Right? And watch. Yeah. Go to the YouTube uh, <laughs> Zoo station and take a chill pill and see if you can get in. <laughs> Uh, so that wraps up our special coverage of the grand opening of Sphere Las Vegas. If there is any information that um, we didn't cover that you want to know about, please feel free to send us a DM, send us an email, and we'll get answers to you. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll look into it. We love researching things. It's, <laughs> it's in our blood. So if you give us a challenge... We're going to try and come it. up with it. We're up, <laughs> We're for, up it. for it and we'll try and come up with the answer. <laughs> we don't know who the next headliner is for sure. So don't ask us that. We do not. <laughs> and again, a big thank you to uh, our sponsors, Vegas Near Me, uh, Hot Works, Infrared Fitness Studios, and Frey Ranch Whiskey. Yeah, we appreciate all the support. It has actually given us time to like go to the re that red carpet put these interviews together, yeah. edit them, and put together this podcast for you. All our subscribers every month um, that donate, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we will see you back here for episode 190 wow. next week. We've been talking about Hotworks Infrared Fitness Studios for the last couple months here on the Vegas Revealed podcast. And Dana, we have been getting some questions from listeners. I know. So you want to do a little Q&A? You ask the question, I'll do the answer. All right. I've got the first one right here. <laughs> do you really work out in an infrared sauna? Yes, you do. You work out right inside the sauna. And there are so many benefits with infrared. It boosts the immune system. It also detoxes the body. And the list goes on. I'd love to hear that. Is there an instructor? Yes, but it's a virtual instructor. Okay, so you're not like rushing to get to this class where everyone looks at you when you come in a minute late or you're packed in there like sardines. It's a virtual instructor. You work out alone in your own private infrared sauna, or you can fit three people. So if you want to bring two friends, that's okay too. All right, so work out with friends that'll keep you accountable. Uh, the next question is it clean? Yes. In fact, Sean, it's probably one of the cleanest fitness studios I've ever been to. It's really incredible. They sanitize all the time. And it's great as we are kind of entering into flu season. It's a 24-7 facility. So you can go 24 hours a day, seven times a week. You have your own code if you go in after staffed hours. But they're always cleaning. And they even have products there um, for the actual members to clean with. You can sanitize your hands. You can spray some sanitizer in the sauna. Very clean. All right, let's get down to money. Do you have to pay to sign up? 
Well, yes, but if you mention the Vegas Revealed podcast this month, they are going to waive the $99 enrollment fee, okay? It is a deal. From there on, $59 a month if you pick a certain studio that you want to go to. We have a list of all the Las Vegas and Henderson locations in our show notes, or you can get the $79 a month membership, and that is sweat everywhere. That I'm talking even if you travel and go out of state, on business or pleasure, you can use the hot works there. And Sean, that's a fraction of the cost that every other studio is offering with similar benefits. Outside of the infrared fitness classes, are there other activities? Yes. In fact, it's really fun because there are prizes involved. In Ooh. fact, yeah, this month they're doing Fittober. Are you ready for that? It's a challenge to help motivate members. Prizes will be awarded after a drawing from all the completed challenge cards with the holidays approaching. Hotworks has kind of a different challenge each month to help ward off those extra pounds because everyone's thinking about that already. So those are some answers to the burning questions that you have had about Hotworks in for a red fitness studio. I love it burning because you're burning those calories, <laughs> right? Remember, they will waive the sign up fee if you mention Vegas Revealed. Please do that. We have all the locations in our show notes, or you can go to hotworks.net.